how to write high converting hooks for your Facebook ads and your TikTok ads. That's actually going to stop people in their scroll to watch your ad and ultimately purchase your product. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Nick Terrio. I run a e-com growth agency. I help brands sell to seven figures a month and I make this content completely free for you guys with the ultimate goal of one day you being able to work with our agency. Before we get started, make sure to like button and hit that subscribe button for new videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And without further ado, let's dive into the video. Okay, so get a lot of questions about hooks and how to actually write high converting hooks. And ultimately, we need to just dive back and just really understand what a hook is. Before I really get into this full guide, tutorial, stuff like that, we need to understand what a hook is. Okay, a hook simply grabs attention and it intrigues people to the point where they want to watch the rest of your video or they grab their attention on a photo to where they want to click to find out more. Okay. So it stops people's attention and, but it ultimately still leaves an open loop to where people want to learn more. Okay. Or watch more. Okay. The whole job of a hook is to get people to go to the next scene, next headline. So like, you know, the next, like watch more, listen to more, read more. The whole point is to move them forward, stop their attention and move them forward. Okay. So that's what a hook does. Okay. A hook and a headline are the same things. Okay. I hate to break it to you. It's the same exact thing. Headline is tended to grab people's attention, lure them in to, you know, gain more info. Okay. When you watch this video right here, that first two to three seconds of this video where I talk about how to write a high converting hook that lured you in. So that's what a hook does. And obviously you see an example at the beginning of this video. So now that you know what it does, let's talk about how to actually write a good one, because this is key right here. If you can't write a good one, you're ultimately going to lose a lot of power in your ads. So going into it, the first thing you have to do is you have to identify what is the mass desire of your market. Okay. Because this is what ultimately is going to kind of tell you what angle of approach you need to take for your headline slash your hook. Okay. So for example, what is a desire? Well, desire is the reason why people purchase a product. Okay. Maybe it's a pair of jeans because they want to look good for a date. Maybe it's a bodybuilder purchasing a chicken breast because they want the you know protein contents in it. Maybe it's a mom buying a chicken breast because she wants to cook a good meal for her family. So that's the mass desire of the market. Okay. So once you understand what the mass desire of the market is, that can allow you to at least start to, you know, add some fuel to the fire. Okay. And again, the way you get, you figure this out is by doing a lot of market research on your audience, watching YouTube videos, looking at Amazon reviews, looking at competitors, looking at um, just general research on your target audience. Now, the next thing is you want to basically go ahead and look at what features of your product are the turns into benefits. Okay. So you want to turn features of your product into benefits. That's going to ultimately allow people to satisfy that desire. So for example, with the iPhone, um, you know, we all seen the iPod 16 gigabytes versus a thousand songs in your pocket. Okay. Where like MP3 player promoted, you know, two gigabyte MP3 player iPod promoted thousand songs in your pocket. Okay. The reason why that ad is successful is because they turn a feature into a benefit. No one knows really, really cares about two gigabytes, but if you tell me a benefit of a thousand songs in your pocket, that's gonna be a completely different story. So you ultimately need to figure out what's the desire of the market. Hey, the desire for the market is more music in, in um, people's pocket. They want to listen to more. So what's, what's one of our features, two gigabytes. How can we turn that feature into benefit? Boom feature. That's a thousand songs. There we go. So now we turn a feature into a benefit based off the desire of the market. Now, the next thing you have to look at is the market awareness. Okay. This is where do we pick up the conversation? So now that you, now that you have your primary desire, your primary feature turned into benefit. Now we can look at the market awareness. Okay. Again, it's require a lot of research right here too, and understanding your customer avatar, because what this allows you to do is that it allows you to understand how far or how close people are to the problem that you are solving. Okay. Now for, you know, the iPod, for example, there's a, that was a huge problem right there. People who had whatever these old MP3 players or like those, you know, those discs you put in your pocket and clip to it and spins and everything like that. <laughs> <laughs> and barely had any music. So a lot of people had this problem. They just didn't really have a solution yet. Okay. So now with the MP3 thing, they were able to really hit on that problem aware specific audience. Okay. So there's five different stages of market awareness. There's unaware, which is basically they're totally 
unaware to the problem. You have to convince someone has a problem first before then you can talk about the problem. Problem aware is you can specifically talk about the problem and then lead them into the solution. So the thing between unaware to problem aware is that they don't know about the problem. Problem aware knows about the problem, but they don't know about the solution. Okay, the next one is solution aware. They're aware of the solutions to lose weight. You know, they're aware of the, the, the what they want, the outcome they want, but they just don't know what solution is best for them. Okay, then there's product aware. And product aware are people who are actively already aware of your product, where would you sell but they're just not sure if you're the best fit and that's where you ultimately want to continue to sell on your business and your product why it's the best and then finally aware which is they really want the product but price is the issue and that's where like a discount you know goes into play so depending on what your market awareness is this will allow you to also gauge you know what you can and cannot say in the hook slash headline okay then lastly is market market sophistication and this is also a very difficult one to hit on so completely understand but let's just look at this from a perspective of you know these specific headlines right here these specific hooks okay so you know first off this comes down to how many products have they seen before yours okay so for example no one would ever say here's why you need to drive a vehicle everyone knows they need to drive a car they just don't know which car is best for them Okay. You know, there's constantly new cars every day on the market. That's why it's a, you know, stage four market sophistication slash stage five. Okay. It's constantly selling people on the best unique car. They can actually talk about features then benefits. Whereas if you're first in the market, you really just kind of focus more on the benefit side. Okay. So this is really important right here. So this is for the weight loss industry right here. And number one, like for example, if you're first in the market for the weight loss industry, you could literally just say lose ugly fat. That's it. And people would come and then purchase your product. But now, because there's so much competition in the marketplace and tons and tons of people have seen weight loss products before, now it's a stage four slash stage five, where like number four right here, no diet, wonder drug for losing weight. So you have to focus on the feature first, then the benefits. And lastly, number five is more identity basis, where it's you know specific product supplement that's focusing more on the core identity people want to live. In that sense right there so now that you have the you know desire calculated benefit calculated the market awareness calculated and the market sophistication calculated and again that's through market research that you start you pull all this together you can actually write the hook slash headline from here and first easiest way to do this is by simply stating the claim okay and when you state the claim it's just putting it in its purest form so for example if i have a weight loss product lose weight that's my claim. You take this product, you lose weight. Okay. So that's going to take it from there. Then the next thing you do is you can start to focus on strengthening the claim. So um, I really like the book Breakthrough Advertising because it really digs deep into all of these um, like market awareness, market sophistication, benefits, desire, and stuff like that really well. And they also have a, um, a few ways of like 38 different ways to strengthen this lose weight claim. And then it, you know, just for example right here, I'm gonna show you four key ones, okay? Measure the size of the claim, measure the speed of the claim, metaphorize the claim, remove limitations from the claim. So for example, A right here, we take the claim, lose weight. Well, we're just gonna measure the size of claim. Lose 40 pounds, okay? We're measuring the size of the claim. How much are they gonna lose, okay? Now, the speed of the claim is the next one. So, you know, right here, I put lose 40 pounds in four weeks, but it could also be lose weight, lose weight in four weeks or less. Then lastly, or next one, metaphorize the claim, melts away ugly fat. Lastly, remove limitations from the claim, which is first, no diet, one the drug to lose weight. So every time we write a hook slash headline for our clients for an ad or anything like that, we go through all of these steps, desire, you know, feature into benefit, market awareness, market sophistication, and then stating the claim, and then strengthen the claim. And through this is how we actually write hooks. And I know this might not be actively of what you're looking for, but this is the foundation of writing a powerful hook. And through this is where you can write some really compelling stuff that can really like take your ads to the next level. And again, if your hook is bad, everything about your ad is doesn't do well. So that's why we like to test the same video with a lot of different hooks on it 
and we seem we see a lot of different success rates even the same photo same photo with a ton of different hooks we see a lot of different success rates because different claims or different hooks do um well you know for like like all have a different level of performance okay and if you're looking at how to actually test that look at my video how to run dynamic ads for facebook 2022 as i have a full video on actual creative processing a creative like testing process and that should help you out a lot right there so i really hope you guys enjoyed this video again run an agency and everything we help brands scale to seven figures a month click the link below to book a free strategy session with me my team we'll hop on a call together we'll you know go through a strategy session together and you can take it and run with it or you have the opportunity to work with us if we think you're a good fit if you enjoyed the video hit that like button hit that subscribe button for new videos every monday wednesday and friday again my name is nick terrio hope you guys have a great rest of your day take care peace